been talking about how we can diversify the economy. Uh, we had a special guest who actually shed a lot of light on that. And then we talked about the implication of the pandemic on the entertainment sector, of particular mentioned the music industry and Nollywood. But there's an area a lot of people are not paying attention to. We're all focusing on the negative aspects of the pandemic. But the truth of the matter is that there are lots of businesses, new businesses that are being discovered every day. So while there is a pandemic going on, billionaires are made. While there's a pandemic going on, a lot of people are tapping into their creative ingenuity and producing uh, content that is sellable even in the times, uh, even in times like this. Uh, joining us is a financial analyst. Uh, we'll be talking about COVID-19. Can we try new businesses? What are the new opportunities that are on ground? Ladies and gentlemen, please uh, let's make welcome Sheon Oyajumo. Um, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. And Oyajumo. Many thanks for joining us. Uh, so, uh, can you tell us what are the new businesses um, that have come up and what businesses are thriving during this pandemic? Okay, um, as you said, there are positive aspects to the lockdown that has occurred come along with the pandemic itself. But most businesses have thrived, have mostly been in the logistics area and businesses that provide e-commerce solutions to businesses. So a lot of businesses, because they can't operate day-to-day -day activities, people can't come into their offices, they can't come into their shops, they have shifted online. So businesses that provide infrastructure for that, businesses like, at least not in Nigeria, though, businesses like Zoom, businesses like Square, businesses like Shopify that enable people to turn brick and mortar businesses into online businesses. They are actually seeing an uptick in business in this period. Also, logistic businesses. For example, we have businesses like um, the mobility businesses that were in Lagos before, like Gokada. They've seen an uptick in, what is it called, in deliveries now. It is a very good opportunity for them to pivot their business model. So instead of ferrying passengers, they ferry parcels, they ferry food items. So people that do takeout, they are seeing an open increase in their businesses, even businesses that were not doing takeout services. That is restaurants that are mostly maybe do a la carte. They've shifted to the online segment of businesses. Online entertainment businesses are seen an uptick. Even in, let's say, the entertainment industry, for example, why cinemas are not making any money because they are shuttered? Streaming businesses are making money, the likes of Netflix and the rest of them. They are seeing increase in subscribers, they are seeing increases in, in what is called in revenue. And then people that provide things like video conferencing facilities, they are seeing what is called uptick in business too, because people need to keep their business running. And why a lot of workers are working remotely, there is a need for software to run those processes. Things like Microsoft Teams, they are seeing an uptick in business, Zoom, and others too. Fantastic. Uh, now, you, you talked about a lot of businesses, existing businesses, changing their business model to adapt to the new situation. So for businesses that are finding it very challenging to adapt to the new situation, what should they look out for? Or what, what, what are the pointers for them to sort of form new business models around their existing business? Okay, um, you should look for the part of your business that can be shifted online. That's the easy part of it. Some businesses cannot really shift online completely, but look for how you can reduce human interaction in your business. That's the easiest solution right now because we don't know there is the possibility that a lot another lockdown might come. We well, so many things are unclear right now. So just limit human interaction in your business. Find a way to reduce the how can I say the person-to-person -person aspect of your business. For example, let's use a co-hotel as an example. A co-hotel is an hotel business. They rely on people coming in to lodge in their facilities. They have some other lines of businesses, but they are very minor, like the laundry part of their business, like the restaurant part of their business. That is not the core service they offer. Yet in this period, we've seen them putting up adverts online for them to deliver food to people's houses and to, what is it called, to deliver people's laundry to them. So basically, they send someone over, it picks them up. So you can apply that sort of thinking to your own business too. Find a way to, what is it called, to reduce human interaction. If there are some parts of your business that you can 
automate too, in a way. There are some paper processes that is, can be easily done online or can, that can easily be handled by software. So try and do that too. That's the kind of things you should look at in what's it called adjusting to this period. So for a lot of businesses, um, a lot of new businesses, they need to thrive on investments. And a lot of investors are very skeptical about investing in these new businesses, especially in this time. So what should an investor look out for? Um, you should look at the underlying business model. While this is an unusual, while these are unusual times, you can look at the intrinsic fact on what's it called futures of your business. This is an extrinsic, this is an external shock to your business. Some businesses are more poised to survive this than others, even though it's an external factor that hits everybody that hits everybody suddenly. The things you should look at are the intrinsic factors of a business that are within the control of the business itself. How resilient is their business model, first of all? How is it called? How sticky is their revenue? There are some businesses that even though there is this shock of COVID-19 and the lockdowns, they are still doing, even though they are not earning as much revenues as they used to, they are still doing mildly okay. At least maybe they are able to cover their costs. Look at the cost structure of the business. Are there unnecessary costs? Are there vanity costs in their business? Like, where's it go? Some businesses don't need official cars for their business. They have multiples of them. Look at all these things. Look at the cost structure of the business. Are they lean? Are they operating efficiently? These are the kind of things that you need to look for because then sooner or later this will pass. And those are the things that contribute to the long-term survival um, survival of a business anyways. So you made mention of the cost of running businesses. We've seen a lot of companies either downsizing their staff uh, strength or, you know, giving uh, workers taking uh, pay cuts. Uh, is that the order of the day now? And what can companies do about that? Okay. Um, one of the largest cost items on most companies' profit and loss statements is the is staffing. Because... Human capacity is necessary to almost all businesses. There is no two ways about that. But in a time when maybe revenue is not coming in, you need to conserve your costs. There, there is no way to dance around this issue. The thing is, you, there are different you know, approaches you can take to it. Some people will decide to put their staff on follow. That's like unpaid leave. And then when this is all over and business recovers, they can come back to business. Some people decide to go the way of, what is it called? cutting salaries and maybe allowances and perks of stuff. So people decide to let workers go. So it depends on the particular circumstances of your business. But at the end of the day, what is most paramount is this, that the business itself survive. If you decide to keep on paying your staff as it is, and then you run out of money, liquidity is the blood flow of the business. If you run out of cash flow and you have to shutter the business completely, then there's, you have lost the plot. What matters most is do something that will enable your business to recover while maintaining the business itself as an entity. So if it, for most people, if they can afford it, maybe they can do a pay cut in the, with the agreement with their staff that immediately things go back to normal, then you go back to normal compensation if you can afford that. If you know you can't afford that, maybe agree with your staff that maybe you do a sort of unpaid leave for now so they don't work and you know that once the some, this state of affairs is over, they come back to work and you get, maybe you give them some sort of compensation to cover this period and then you go back. But the thing is this, right. some businesses can, businesses are staff heavy and they can't afford this. So maybe they would have to let some people go, sadly. Thank you so much, Sheun. Thank you so very much. We appreciate you and uh, we wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. And that has been the show. I am sure that you've been very much enlightened. Um, coronavirus is not a death sentence. Uh, we should look at the positive side of things. I know there is so much panic, um, but we should know that there is light at the end of the tunnel. Vaccines are being developed. And of course, we know that in no distant time, this will all be over. Don't forget, stay safe. 
uh, self-isolate if you don't necessarily have any business out. Um, wear protective uh, gear when you go out, wash your hands regularly, and let's all join hands together and flatten the curve. It has been a great time with you. My name is Hero Daniels. Don't forget to follow the conversation at YNiger TV. See you next week. Bye.